In June 2013, the container vessel Mole Comfort snapped in half over 300 miles from land in the middle of the Arabian Sea. Despite remaining afloat for a few weeks, both sections eventually sank resulting in the complete loss of over 4,000 containers and estimated insurance costs of over half a billion dollars. So what happened? Why did a relatively new vessel founder in such a dramatic way? Mole Comfort began her life as the APL Russia in 2008 and was renamed four years later when she transferred from American President Lines to Mitsui OSK Lines in 2012. At 316 metres in length and with a capacity for over 8,000 TEU, she was one of the largest container ships in the world at the time of her launch. She worked Mole's Asia to Europe route, which is basically a series of hops between the major Asian manufacturing centres and European consumer hubs. On the 11th of June 2013, she departed Singapore bound for Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, on a nine-day passage across the Arabian Sea, through the Gulf of Aden and up into the Red Sea. With around 4,500 miles on passage, she required an average speed of 18 knots, of course with the exemption of the anti-piracy transit corridor where they'd run at their top speed for security reasons. Unfortunately, the weather routing information indicated there would be heavy weather for the crossing of the Arabian Sea, although it shouldn't have been beyond the vessel's capabilities. Before we carry on into the storm, I just want to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Opera. Opera is a desktop browser which is faster, safer and smarter than default browsers. I use multiple browsers on my computer so that I always have one completely clean and unbiased to help me research these videos, so when Opera reached out I was happy to install and give its features a proper test as it aligns with my needs for a private browsing environment. It's easy to customise privacy settings so I can set the browser to clear everything whenever I close it so that every session starts fresh, giving me results uninfluenced by my previous history and it even comes with its own built-in VPN, giving even greater anonymity to search results by removing any location bias if that's what you need. As I research with lots of different tabs, I particularly enjoy their tab islands feature so that I can quickly create islands with things like official accident reports, news reports and videos about different events. I've also set mine up with Aria, Opera's AI assistant, in the sidebar so that I can gauge the sort of information readily available online. I do find AI is pretty hopeless with these sorts of videos, but it can still give me really useful information. For example, when I ask what happened to the Mole Comfort, Aria gives me a rough answer, but there are some things that are missing, immediately telling me that the story is one that I need to tell. Download Opera for free using the link in the description and give it a go yourself. Anyway, back to the Mole Comfort where she had just received weather routing information for heavy weather. On the 16th of June 2013, so five days into their passage, their noon report indicated that they were maintaining a course of 291 degrees and averaging 20 knots through the water. The weather at the time was on the port bow with the wind at 39 knots from 250 degrees and the swell running at 5 metres coming from the west. Throughout the rest of the day, the weather continued to worsen with estimates in the early hours of the following morning of an increase in wave height up to 6, 6.5 metres. By 7am, they'd reduced the engine to 79 RPM, slowing the vessel to try and make the ride more comfortable. 45 minutes later, there was what the crew later described as a big jerk as a couple of particularly large waves struck the port bow. Shortly afterwards, bilge alarms started to sound in the pipe duct. The duct is a hollow area within the keel containing engineering pipes that need to run the full length of the ship. Engineers also noticed that the levels within some of the empty fuel tanks on the port side were starting to increase, even though they were supposed to be empty. Up on the bridge, the officers could see the length of the ship and noticed that the forward part seemed to be reacting to the waves in a different way to the after part. All indications were that Mole Comfort had suffered catastrophic damage, so by 9am the master broadcast a distress message and made preparations to abandon ship. Around 24 miles away, another container vessel, the Yanshan Express, responded to the distress call and set an intercept course. By 9.45, the crew received visual confirmation of a large crack in the side of the cargo hold, so the master gave the order to abandon ship. They embarked on the starboard side totally enclosed lifeboat and, after a little difficulty launching in between floating containers, managed to successfully get away. Half an hour later, at 10.18, the Yanshan Express arrived on scene and manoeuvred to recover the Mole Comfort's crew from the lifeboat. By 11.36, all 26 crew members were safely recovered, so with no more immediate danger to life, the Yanshan Express was released to continue on passage with the survivors on board. Meanwhile, Mole Comfort's owners engaged a salvage team in an attempt to recover the two floating halves of the ship. The Elrit system was still operating, so it was relatively simple to keep track of the after section, even with no one on board. 
On the 24th of June, so a week after the crew abandoned ship, four salvage vessels arrived and successfully managed to take the forward section under tow. The after section was much trickier because it continued to take on water and was rolling heavily, causing containers to continuously fall overboard. It made it impossible for salvage vessels to get close enough to attach a tow, so by the 27th of June, it finally succumbed to the elements and sank in around 4,000 metres of water. The forward part remained under tow for the next week, heading north towards a port of refuge. Unfortunately, a fire then took hold which tore through the containers and further damaged the hull itself. Due to the weather conditions, it proved impossible to bring under control, so on the 10th of July, in over 2,000 metres of water, the forward section also slipped beneath the waves. The complete loss of both halves of the Mole Comfort is remarkably obvious when we look back at container losses over the last decade or so. That single incident is responsible for making 2013 the worst year on record. Unfortunately, because the two halves of the Mole Comfort sank in such deep water, it's been impossible to definitively ascertain the cause of the sinking. We have, however, been able to make some educated guesses. Firstly, it seems that Mole Comfort was navigated professionally with noon reports, crew testimony, weather routing information and the successful evacuation, all providing evidence of the crew's professionalism. That leads us to think it was something outside of the crew's control, so possibly something structural or even procedural. Fortunately, Mole Comfort was one of several sister vessels built at the same time, meaning there were plenty of almost identical ships that investigators could get their hands on. All six similar vessels within Mole's fleet, the Creation, Charisma, Celebration, Courage, Competence and Commitment, were checked and found to have deformations in remarkably similar locations. It was all in the vicinity of double bottom tanks 5, 6 and 7, the same sort of area in which Mole Comfort snapped. Although it was all only minor damage, the operating company and shipbuilders took them all back to dry dock for structural upgrades which must have solved the issue because at the time of writing this video 10 years later, all six vessels were underway carrying their various cargoes around the world. The thing is, given that the sisters were all built to the correct standard, there's nothing to confirm that the slight hull buckling itself was enough for Mole Comfort to break her back, so surely there has to be more to it. In the absence of any other evidence, our best guess may be to analyse similar incidents where other vessels have suffered a similar fate and see if it's possible that there might be an overlap of cause. From what I can find, the most notable similar incident probably occurred around five years before the Mole Comfort, when the MSC Napoli broke in half in the English Channel. In that case, the vessel ended up beached on the south coast of the UK, so there was plenty of opportunity to investigate thoroughly. It turned out that the most likely cause there was that MSC Napoli had been unknowingly overloaded due to the misdeclaration of container weights. I don't know about you, but to me, it seems entirely possible that the same thing could have happened with the Mole Comfort. No matter how professional the crew, if they had unknowingly loaded containers with weights significantly different from that which had been declared, it is possible that the vessel was in fact sailing outside of her structural design limits. Then, when she later encountered heavy weather in the Arabian Sea, the bending forces generated by the large waves and loading configuration would have just proved too much for the ship's structure to cope with. A few strikes from some exceptional waves on the port bow would have sent shock waves through the hull, opening up a crack at the weakest point. The continuing bad weather made the complete separation of the two halves inevitable and made it next to impossible for the salvage teams to recover the ship. From a commercial perspective, it couldn't have happened at a worse time. The westbound passage meant that she was fully loaded with manufactured products heading to European markets. The $66 million hull and machinery loss sounds expensive, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to the estimated half a billion dollars worth of cargo that went down. Unfortunately, due to the remote location and depth of water, it's unlikely that we'll ever know the full story for certain. The best we can do in this case is to make an educated guess and attempt to learn our lessons from that.